All right, let's talk about the internet's spooky, unfinished basement. How did you manage to get this far in life thinking the dark web was just a myth that your techie nephew made up to sound cool? Today, I'll explain the dark web's secret ties to Bitcoin to you like you're five years old. And by the time we're done here, you'll finally understand why a secret part of the internet needs a secret kind of money. And you can go back to pretending you knew it all along. First, you need to understand that the internet you use every day is just the tip of a very, very big iceberg. It's the part that's clean, well lit, and full of cat videos and websites where you buy socks. This is called the surface web. It's everything Google can find. It's nice and safe and boring, just like the living room that your parents told you to stay in. Then, there's a much bigger part of the internet under the water. And this is called the deep web. Now, don't get so excited. It's not as mysterious as it sounds. The deep web is just all the stuff that search engines can't see because it's behind a password or a login screen. Your email inbox is the deep web. Your online banking portal is the deep web. Even your company's internal server where you have to log in to see your work schedule is the deep web. It's kind of like your diary. It exists, yeah, but you keep it in a drawer so that your nosy brother can't read it. It's full of boring personal stuff. Nothing to see here. Let's move along. Now, way down down at the very bottom of the iceberg, in the dark, cold, murky water, is a tiny little piece called the dark web. And this part is special. It was built on purpose to be hidden and to make everyone on it a ghost. I mean, you can't get there using your normal internet browser. Your Chrome, your Safari, your Firefox, they don't have the secret password. To get into the dark web, you need a special key. And the key is a special browser. The most famous one being called Tor. Now think of the regular internet as walking down a busy street. I mean, there are cameras everywhere. Your phone company knows where you are, the websites you visit know who you are, the ads that follow you around know you just looked at a really specific type of lamp. You leave footprints everywhere. You're not a ghost. You're a person walking down the street and everyone can see you. So, using the Tor browser to get to the dark web is completely different. It's like you're wearing an invisibility cloak. When you ask to go to a website, the Tor browser doesn't just walk you straight there. Instead, it sends your request on a wild zigzagging journey all over the world. It bounces your signal between a bunch of different computers run by volunteers, wrapping it in layers of protection like a little digital onion. And by the time your request gets to the website, it's got no idea where you came from. It's like mailing a letter by giving it to a friend, who gives it to their cousin, who gives it to a guy on a train, who gives it to a pilot, who then finally drops it off in the mailbox. If someone asks the mailbox where the letter came from, the mailbox just shrugs. I mean, it's got no clue. And this makes you anonymous. A ghost. No one knows who you are or where you're from. Why would anyone want to be a ghost on the internet, you might ask? Well, there are some pretty good reasons. Maybe you're a journalist in a country where speaking the truth gets you into serious trouble. Maybe you're a secret agent. Maybe you're just someone who really, really believes in privacy and doesn't want giant companies tracking your every move. Those are the good guys. But as you can probably guess, a place with no names and no faces is also the perfect place for bad guys. If you can't be seen, then you can't get caught. And this is why the dark web has such a reputation for being the internet's home for illegal and shady stuff. It's a place where people do things they absolutely don't want the police or anyone else really to know about. It's the secret clubhouse for people who are up to no good. So, you're in the secret clubhouse, you're wearing your invisibility cloak, and you're a ghost. Let's say you want to buy something. We'll pretend you want to buy a very, very rare, completely imaginary, and totally legal purple squirrel. Now, the seller is also a ghost. They don't know who you are, and you don't know who they are. So, how do you pay for the squirrel? Well, you obviously can't use your credit card. I mean, that would be ridiculous. It would leave a trace and take off your invisibility cloak in the middle of the secret clubhouse and shout your full name, home address, and social security number out. The whole point was to be a ghost, remember? So a credit card transaction is a bright, shiny arrow pointing directly at you. And the bank sees it as well. The credit card company is seeing it, and it's leaving a permanent, very obvious paper trail. So, credit cards are out. And you can't use PayPal either. You get the same problem. It's linked to your bank account and your identity. So, using PayPal is like having your mom co-sign for your secret illegal purchase. It defeats the entire purpose of being a ghost. So you need ghost money. You need a way to pay for things that doesn't scream your name from the rooftops. You need a type of money that also wears an invisibility cloak. And this is where Bitcoin comes in. Bitcoin is often called cryptocurrency, which is some big fancy word. Just forget it. Think of Bitcoin as magic internet money. It was designed to work without needing a bank. It's money that lives on the internet, and its main feature is that it's not directly tied to your real world name. It's like digital cash. When you pay for a coffee with a $5 bill, the barista doesn't know your name or where you live. 
The cash itself doesn't have your identity written all over it, so you hand it over, you get your coffee, and you walk away. The transaction is anonymous, and Bitcoin tries to be just like that. But, you know, for the internet. Here's how the magic trick works. Every single Bitcoin transaction that has ever happened is recorded in a giant public book, and this book is called the blockchain. Now, I know it might sound a bit complicated, but trust me, it's not. Think of it as a public coloring book that everyone in the world can see at the same time. When one person sends Bitcoin to another person, it's like a new drawing is added to the coloring book for everyone to see. Page 5 shows that some money moved from this spot to that spot. Now, you might be thinking, wait a minute, if the book is public, how is that private? I mean, how is that anonymous? Well, that's a good question. Here's the clever part. In the public coloring book, no one uses their real names. Instead, everyone's given a secret code name, which is called a wallet address. And this address is just a long, random string of letters and numbers. Kind of like a super long, impossible to guess secret mailbox number. So, the public coloring book doesn't say, Bob Smith sent $10 to Jane Doe. It says, wallet number 1AB2CD3E4F sent 0.1 Bitcoin to wallet number 5GH6IJ7K8L. Everyone can see that the transaction happened, they can see the drawing, but they have no idea who owns those wallets. They don't know who's holding the crayons. The addresses are not automatically linked to anyone's real-world identity. You're not Bob Smith. You're simply 1AB2CD3E4F. You're once again a ghost. Do you see the connection now? It's kind of a perfect match. I mean, a marriage made in a dark, anonymous haven. The dark web is a secret place designed for anonymous actions. And Bitcoin is secret money designed for anonymous transactions. A secret place needs secret money. And when you're on the dark web, you're a ghost. When you use Bitcoin, your money is also a ghost. The two things fit together perfectly. I mean, the people on the dark web built a whole economy where you can buy and sell things without anyone knowing who is buying or selling. And this economy, it needed a currency. It needed money that worked just like its users. Hidden, hard to trace, and not controlled by any bank or government that could come snooping around. Bitcoin was the obvious answer. It became the official currency of the internet's spooky basement. Now, it is important to know that Bitcoin is not perfectly 100% anonymous. It's more like semi-anonymous, because that public coloring book exists forever, and clever detectives can sometimes study the drawings for a very long time and eventually figure out who was holding the crayon. So if you ever trade your Bitcoin for real money at a place that requires your ID, for example, well, that links your real name to your secret wallet number. It's like a witness saw you buy the crayon, but for the people on the dark web, it was, and still is, a whole lot better than using a credit card. It's good enough to keep the ghost economy running. So, when you hear that Bitcoin is used by criminals, this is what they're talking about. They're talking about the perfect pairing of an anonymous marketplace with an anonymous-ish currency. It allows a drug dealer on one side of the world to sell to a buyer on the other side, and the payment can happen without either of them ever knowing the other's real name and without a bank being able to stop it. It's financial eviction for the rule followers, creating a space where the rules simply don't apply. It wrecks the normal system of trust like a toddler with a permanent marker on a white sofa. It's why law enforcement agencies have spent so much time and energy trying to figure out how to track Bitcoin transactions and unmask the ghosts. Now, let's recap, shall we? The internet is a giant iceberg. The top part is the regular internet, and underneath is all the boring stuff. And at the very, very bottom is the dark web, a secret clubhouse where everyone is a ghost. And to get in, you need a special key called the Tor Browser. And since you can't use your real money in the secret clubhouse, since that would reveal who you are, you use magic internet money called Bitcoin. And Bitcoin works because every transaction is recorded in a public coloring book. But everyone uses a secret code name, so nobody really knows who is who. Secret place, secret money, it's really that simple. You see? You get it now. You understand the fundamental connection between the dark web and Bitcoin. It's not some high-level computer science wizardry. It's just a hidden place that needed a hidden form of payment to work. It's a tool for anonymity. And like any tool, it can be used for both good or bad. But on the dark web, it mostly found its purpose with the latter. Now go on. You're officially less clueless than you were a few minutes ago. You're welcome.